Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we love you, my God. We worship you. Oh, God, we just continue, God, to ask you right now, my God, Lord, to begin to fill, God, Lord, every room, God, every house, God, that you would begin to just, God, just begin to fill every home, God, fill every heart with your presence tonight, my God. Lord, we ask you, God, just to move the way you want to move tonight, Lord. God, we need you. We need your presence, my God. God, we need you, God. We need you, Holy Spirit, God, tonight, my God, to, to move, God. We need you to touch, God. Oh, God, our hearts, God. We need you to touch our minds, God. God, we need your word, God, to fall on good ground tonight, God. God, I pray, God, that you would begin to prepare the ground of our heart, God. I pray that you would begin to prepare our ears, God. Oh, God, that we can hear you, God. Lord, that we can hear the voice behind the voice, my God. Lord, Lord, I pray right now, God, Lord, that you would meet us right where we're at, God. God, meet us at our need, God. God, you know where we are, God. God, you know, God, oh, God, things that we may be going through, God. God, you know every every personal need, God. Lord, that is represented, God, here online, God. Lord, you know every need, God. Oh, God, and you, God, are, are able, God, Lord, to meet those needs, God. Lord, your Bible says, God, Lord, that what is man, God, that you are mindful of him, God. Lord, we know that you're mindful, God. Oh, God, of our need. We know that you're mindful of our life, God. Oh, Lord, and we pray right now, God, Lord, that you would begin to move, God. We pray that you would begin to move throughout this service, God. Oh, God, we need your presence more than ever, God. God, we need your presence more than ever in a time like this, God. Oh, God, we ask you, God, to go before us, God. Lord, go before us in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, let heaven come down, God. Let heaven come down. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, if you need the presence of God, right there where you're at. If you need the presence of God, you say, I need Jesus. I don't know about you, but tonight, I came expecting to meet Jesus. Amen. And right there where you're at, I pray and we pray, amen, that you're, you came uh, ready, expecting to hear from God tonight. Amen. We want to just welcome you uh, for tuning in online, amen, to our Wednesday night fire and power. Come on, somebody. On behalf of our pastors, Pastor Luis and Sister Judy, we welcome you. And listen, right now, before we open up our service, we know that uh, many of us are jumping on the, on the stream right now. Look, right now, our people are jumping on. We want to just uh, ask that you would share the stream. Amen. Begin to share it. Start a watch party. Come on, let's get our family to church tonight. Come on, somebody. Let's get our loved ones, our friends. Say, come to church with me tonight. You know, all you got to do is just jump in to this uh to my uh my, uh, <laughs> jump into the stream, amen. Come on, somebody. And, and tonight, listen, we're going to open up in a word of prayer, amen. So right there where you're at, if you could join with me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before you, Lord, and we ask you right now, my God, Lord, that you will begin to move, God, Lord, in a special way, God. Lord, we're asking you, God, to, to speak, God. Lord, we came expecting tonight, God, to see, God, you move, God. We, we came expecting to get a word, God, and we pray, God, that you would just begin to move, God. And Lord, we ask, God, that you would just have your way, God. Meet every need represented here tonight, my God. Lord, we love you. We praise you. God bless you tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together all over this place and let's worship the Lord. Come on in this house. Come on, praise him this evening. Come on, all over this place. Come on, give him some glory. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, he's worthy. Hallelujah. Whoa.
God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Come on, clap those hands. Yeah, yeah. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, feels good to worship him on a Wednesday night. Hey, come on. Say God is, God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. He's carrying, carrying our burdens, covering all the shame. He has overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. I will live, I will live, Come on. I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ. Come on. Yeah. Say God is carrying on. Yes. God is on our side. He has overcome. Yes. He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Scary, carrying our burdens, covering all the shame. He has overcome, yes. He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Oh. Jesus, you are here. Oh, come on, say, I will live. I will live. I will not die. Resurrection power of Christ alive in me, and I am free in Jesus' name. So I will live, I will not die, will declare. Whoa! Come on, somebody battle! Come on, tonight, battle in the spirit. Come on, we're in a war of victory outreach, and we're tired. It's time to battle against the enemy, to push back the darkness. Oh! Say, God is God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom. I cannot be shaken in the name of Jesus. Enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God is, God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom. I cannot be shaken in the name of Jesus. Enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Say in the name, in the name of Jesus, oh, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, come on, pushing back the darkness, come on, cry out. lighting up a kingdom that cannot, cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus. And we will shout it out, shout it out. I will live, I will not die. Resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name. Say, I will live, I will not die. I will declare. God 
is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. Come on. And we will shout it out, shout it out, say, God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Enemies defeated, and we will shout it out. Shout it Say, out. God is, God is fighting for us. Pushing back the, the darkness, darkness, lighting up the kingdom. I cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out. Shout it Say, out. God is, God is fighting for us. Pushing back the darkness. Lighting up the kingdom that cannot be, be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. And we will shout it out. Shout it Say, out. God is fighting for us. Pushing back the darkness. Lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. And we will shout it out. Shout it out. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on. Somebody break down those strongholds all over this place. Come on. Clap those hands. Come on. Online right here in the house. Come on. Clap those hands. Worship him tonight. Come on. All over this place. Begin to give him some glory tonight. Come on. Just lift those hands. Lift those hands. Come on, he's worthy. Come on, just lift those hands. With that same excitement, just begin to turn it into an atmosphere of prayer, of worship. Come on, just worship the Lord. Come on, begin to worship the Lord. Begin to worship the Lord. Come on. Begin to just worship the Lord. Come on. Worship him. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Come on, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you may be facing tonight, I'm here to let you know that we serve a God that is greater, a God that is stronger, and I really believe that we are in a season of promise, Victory Outreach Hemet, that we're in a season that God wants to expand and explode us. We're in a season that God wants to really move us. Come on, begin to press in right now for 30 seconds. Come on, begin to press in tonight. Come on, in your own home, wherever you're at, begin to worship him. Come on, worship him. Whoa, you're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say hallelujah, hallelujah. I am not alone. Come on, say. He's my comfort, he's my comfort, always holds me close. He always guides me, he always guides me through mountains and valleys, through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing, His joy is refreshing. He restores my soul, restores my soul. That's why we say mercy, mercy and goodness. They give me assurance, give me assurance. That I'll see his glory, say, I'll see his glory. Come on, face to face, all over this place. Face to face. That's why we say, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say, he's 
this place. So what we say, your spirit, your spirit lives within me. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. My victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within Spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me, my victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me, my victory, my victory. You're my victory, you're my victory, you're my victory, you're my victory, my victory, you're my victory, you're my victory, my victory. Come on, just worship him, my big, praise him, my big, give him glory, my victory, my victory, my big. Come on, begin to worship. Lift those hands. Lift those hands and worship them. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not Lord. He's my comfort. Oh, he's my comfort. Oh, he's my comfort. Just worship him. Father, we thank you for your peace that's here tonight. Come on, some of you online, you haven't felt peace in a long time. Let God give you peace tonight. Come on, let him give you peace tonight. That's it. Come on, just begin to love him all over this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to worship him. Come on, all over this place. Come on, don't get tired of worshiping them. Come on. You're worthy, you're worthy. You, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. all the things you've done for me and no one can worship you for me we say here's my worship all of my worship receive my worship all of my worship, here's my worship, here's my worship, all of my worship, we 
praise him, I worship all of my worship. Say you, oh Lord, you, Lord, you are worthy. And no one, no one can worship you for me. For It's my worship. Come on. All of my worship. Say receive. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Here's my worship. Say here's my worship. All of my worship. Say receive. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Here's my, here's my worship. Say all of my, all of my worship. Receive, receive my worship. All of my worship. Here's my worship. Say, here's my worship. All of my, all of my worship. Say, receive, receive my worship, all of my worship, and I will not be silent. Come on, say, I will, I will always worship you as long as I. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Sit and I will, I will not be silent. Here's my worship, all of my worship. We sing, we sing my worship, all of my worship. Here's my say, my worship, all of my, all of my worship. We sing, we sing my worship. All of my worship, say you, Lord, you, Lord, you are worthy. Somebody make some noise. Come on. Crowd. Come on. Give the Lord some praise. Oh. Give the Lord a radical praise tonight. Yeah. Come on. It's Wednesday night. Yeah. Come on. We're in our fire and power. Oh. Give the Lord a radical hand. A praise, hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen. Thank you, Jesus, 
Amen, amen. Well, once again, we want to just welcome you, amen, to our Wednesday night fire and power. We can be seated here tonight. Praise the Lord. How many know that tonight, amen, uh, I, I don't know about you, but we're expecting God to do something powerful here tonight, amen, even through the worship, amen, through our worship experience. I know we can even feel it online right there as we're watching from home, amen, and so thank you, Jesus, amen, and, and I just know God has so much more for us. Us, amen as we continue to tune in tonight amen and if you haven't shared if you haven't started a watch part do so right now amen because the same uh the same experience the same blessing the way god is meeting your need uh right now god wants to do it to many more amen and it's simple share it start a watch party get people on involved amen and tonight amen uh we just want to make a few announcements available to victory outreach hemet our church amen uh this sunday somebody say this this Sunday, amen, uh, Sunday at 4 p.m., our kids gang, Victory Outreach Kids Gang, Hemet, amen, we are kicking off our, our uh, Zoom, amen, our Zoom online experience, amen, and uh, we're it's going to be our Zooming in on God's promise, amen, and so listen, we want to encourage you, parents, teachers of, of our church amen we want to encourage you amen we sent out the link we, we've uh, posted it on our facebook amen we want to encourage you to jump in sunday at 4 p.m amen because uh how many know that uh parents don't only need uh uh we're not the only ones who need to receive how many know that our kids Amen. How many know that our, our kids gang, they need to receive. Amen. And so listen, uh, a, a team of us, amen, we got together, amen, and, and we're going to be uh, we're gonna be just doing that, amen, meeting the need. Amen. We're going to have some worship. There's going to be a craft, a lesson, uh, all that, amen. But we want you to uh, partner with us, parents, teachers, and jump in at Sunday at 4 p.m. Amen. And then also uh, Women's Convention 2020, amen, is right around the corner. Uh, matter of fact, it's going to be next month. Uh, it's going to be another online experience, Monday, September the 7th through Friday, September the 11th. So women of God, uh, you know, I know, uh, amen, the women of God always tear it up, amen. They always turn it up, amen, and uh, they go all out for the Lord. And I know it's going to be a powerful experience, amen, but we want to encourage you, amen, to, to really uh, uh, separate your time, amen, separate your time for the services, play them, replay them, amen, and, and uh, that's going to be taking place Monday, September the 7th through Friday, September the 11th. And then also we want to encourage you, amen, if you've already jumped into a zoom life group and registered continue to be faithful say faithful say faithful Amen. Stay faithful. I know the Zoom life groups have been amazing. They've been a, a wonderful, uh, powerful aspect of our church. It's how we've been keeping all of our people connected. It's how we've been able to meet, uh, how we've been able to come together and have fellowship. Amen. And those of you uh, that haven't been able to uh, jump on a Zoom, if you haven't registered yet for any of the Zoom life groups, go to our website at www.victoryoutreachhemet.com. Sign up for a Zoom life group. Amen. Jump in because uh, if you haven't already, amen, you're missing out. Amen. God wants to move. Amen. And God wants you to be a part of the, uh, the family uh, of God. Amen. So jump into that. Also, registration. Amen. Is ba open back up on Friday, this Friday. Amen. For our Sunday morning celebration. Amen. And I I've been telling people, look, if you've been watching online, and man, I of course, I know it's been powerful, but it's nothing like coming in person to person. Amen. And, and just it's an wonderful, wonderful presence, amen, and so we want to encourage you, if you want to be here, sign up on Friday, praise the Lord, register on Friday for our Sunday celebration service, praise the Lord, are you still excited tonight, come on, are you still excited tonight, praise the Lord, amen, well tonight, amen, I have the awesome privilege of picking up our, our tithes and offering tonight, amen, and so uh, I want to just read a scripture to us tonight, I don't know about you, but I love to give. Come on, somebody. I love to give. Amen. Uh, my wife and I, we love to give. Amen. And uh, one of the scriptures that I like uh, is it found in Proverbs chapter 11, beginning in verse 24. And it reads like this. It says, one gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds what is right, only to become poor. Another version says it like this. It says, there is one who scatters and yet increases all the more. And there is one who withholds what is justly due. 
and yet it results only in one. Amen. And how many know that I believe uh, that God wants to teach our people, Victory Outreach Heaven, to become heavenly, to become heavily invested in the kingdom of God. See, I believe this. I believe that that God wants you and I to become heavily invested in the kingdom of God. Because I believe that people who are heavily invested, amen, people who, who are constantly giving of their time, people are, who are constantly giving of their, of their finances, giving of their prayers, giving of, of just everything that they have, as they continue to invest it and sow it into the kingdom and give and give and give, I believe they're making an investment into the house. And because they're so heavily invested. See, I believe this. I heard this before. I heard this said before that he who, in, who, he who invests most lasts last. And see, I believe that people who are heavily invested, it's not so easy to walk away. Come on, somebody. How many know when you're putting your, your, your time, your effort, your energy into something, well, you're not easily discouraged when something goes wrong. Come on, somebody. You're not easily discouraged when the devil tries to come and lie to you. Come on, somebody. You're not easily discouraged when the devil comes and tries to attack your family or your finances because you know, you know what, devil, you can't tell me nothing. I don't know what, I don't care what you say because, you know, know what i'm invested man i i've given to my church there's no way i would walk away so easy because i've invested into the house of god see i believe this that people who are who are not really invested it's easier for them to walk away people who are not invested in a prayer life they're not invested in the time of the word people who are not invested in giving into god's house it's easy. It's easier. And so I believe that that's why it's important that you and I, we continue to stay faithful. I believe it's important that you and I continue to give whatever we have because God is able to give all the more. We can't compare to what God can give. Amen. But I believe that if we are people that are invested into the house of God, God is going to continue to give us his favor. God is going to continue to pour out his blessings upon our life. And, and we'll be able to stand against anything because we have put something in. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but that just excites me. That just lets me know that, you know what, God, you got me, God. You've been taking care of me all this time, God. And I, and I know I can say the same for many of us that are listening online. Say, God has got me through every season, even through a time like this, through pandemic. God is still providing. You're getting paid more than what you, what you were making before the pandemic. God has been so good to us. Come on, somebody. But he's being so good to us so we can invest it right back into his kingdom, so we can invest it right back into the work of God. How many can say amen to that? And so tonight, I pray that you're encouraged. And, and, and we know that our people, we don't struggle with giving. Come on, somebody. Victory Outreach Hammer, we have some faithful people that are invested in the house. It's, a, it's no questions asked. Amen. And there's some of us online. Amen. I want to encourage you. Amen. Start investing into the kingdom. You want to be a strong Christian? Start investing. Invest your time. Invest your energy. Invest your finances so you can become a, a, a strong a strong pillar in the house of God. So you can become a strong, faithful son and daughter in the house of God. That's what we want to see. That's what our pastors want to see. And that's what the Lord is doing in our church. Amen. And so tonight, I want to encourage you. Amen. There's many ways that you can give. Amen. Right there from home. Uh, check out our website, www.victoryoutreachhemet.com. Uh, we also have a Zelle. Amen. Many of us have Zelle. Uh, right there at victory, uh, B O Hemet. Zell at gmail come on somebody and, and you can give through that way many avenues that you can give amen so tonight i want to pray for us tonight as we give right now jesus we love you we're so grateful god lord that you first invested into us god into our lives god god you don't ask us to do anything that you haven't done my god you do what you're asking us to do you you lead the example god and also, God, many, many leaders that you have risen up in the house, God, they lead by example, God. 
and, and we see the blessing that's upon their life. We see the favor that's upon their life. And so tonight, God, we're asking you to do that for all of your people listening tonight, God. Lord, that you would begin to pour out your favor, pour out your blessing, God. Lord, as we continue to sow, as we continue to scatter the ground with our seed, with our finances, God. Lord, that there would be harvests that are going to be reaped, God. Lord, in due season, my God. Lord, we thank you, God, that we're able to give. We thank you, God, that you're going to move, God, and open up avenues, resources, God, for your people that really desire to give to your house, but they're just not able to tonight, God. We're praying for them as well, my God. We love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, if you could take a moment, amen, to give right now. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a good, good hand of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And once again, on behalf of Pastor Luis Sistrini, we welcome you to the house of the Lord and thank all those that remain faithful through this pandemic with their tithes and their offerings. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Faithful. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, it's, my, it's my privilege here tonight to be able to minister the word of God. And I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful for my salvation. I'm grateful for what God has done within my life. And I'm so grateful for the ministry of Victory Outreach. I'm really grateful for the ministry of Victory Outreach. Amen. I believe many of us that are watching, you know, part of our local church. And even some I know that are watching here today that are no longer part of Victory Outreach. But how many know you got roots in Victory Outreach? You came through the home and you, and God really touched your life and used the ministry of Victory Outreach in a powerful way. You know, I thank God for ministries such as ours that, in a time of need, was there for us, amen, and so, I'm just so grateful to be here, I'm grateful for my pastors, Pastor Luis, Sister Judy, for their dedication, 20 years in the city of Hemet, come on, put, the, put your hands together for that, amen, 20 years battling and ministering here in the city of Hemet, you know, I'm so grateful for that, and, and also, you know, I'm, we just came back from uh, San Diego, the beautiful city of San Diego, for, we had a powerful time, a three-day event, uh, 2020 vision, amen. If you did not make it out there to the revival under the tent in Victory Outreach San Diego, man, you missed out. But we pray that you didn't miss out, that you were online. It was a multi regional uh, online experience. It was a powerful time. And boy, that we need it, man. I needed it. It was a great time of refreshing, of being able just to be in God's presence. You know, Victory Outreach San Diego is a praying church, it's a church that's on the move, it's a, it's a front runner, it's a trailblazing church. And we were just blessed to be a part of it uh, this entire week. And so on Sunday night uh, there uh, in, in San Diego, it was Pastor Del Castro ministered, uh, you know, the powerful message about end time, end time churches. Also uh, Monday and Tuesday, Pastor Rick Alanis, Sister Jeannie were able to minister. And then last night, uh, Pastor Al Valdez. You know, I was able to be there a couple of days, but even I, I had to come home, get home to the men. But on uh, last night, Tuesday night, even though we weren't there physically, man, God's presence was there. It manifested in a powerful way. There was a spirit of brokenness, a spirit of revival broke out. 
They even launched out a church. Come on now, Victor Irish Temecula is going to be uh, starting soon. And just so much, so many things that are happening, so many things on the move. And so we just want to say from the bottom of our heart, we thank Victor Irish San Diego. We thank Pastor Al and Sister Georgina for investing the entire multi-region. I'm going to know we have a powerful multi-region. We got inspired. We got envisioned. And it was just a powerful time. Amen. And so we're going to ask you to continue. When we have different events and when we're promoting different things, get on board. Get on board. I, it, it, you know, it confirmed. It confirmed that it's great to be in the house when things like that happen. But even on an online experience, God can meet you right there where you're at. Amen. So it's so important. It's so important to continue to ma- remain faithful to our, to our online services. And then also all the different things that we have taking place throughout the outreach. We want to make them available. That's why we announce them so that you can be a part of it. So you, can, you too can get your breakthrough. How many, how many want a breakthrough? Amen. Get your breakthrough. And, 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 and so be a part of what God is doing in Victory Outreach International. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. I just want to share that quick testimony how God really ministered in a special way. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you turn with me uh, tonight to the book of Matthew, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And we're in this, in, in, our, in our theme for this month is in this, this time is a season of promise. So we're involved in a season of promise series. And in a season of promise, that's what we're involved in, amen? And so I'm going to be ministering out of that tonight for tonight's Wednesday night fire and power service, amen? I pray everybody's blessed here tonight. And as you turn with me here tonight, Matthew chapter 24, and I'm going to be reading uh, out of uh, verse 42, amen? Amen. Matthew 24 and in 42. It says, therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. I'm going to say it again. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming... He would have kept watch, and he would have not let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come before your presence here tonight with gratitude in our heart. So thankful and grateful for everything you've done, even what you've done through Victory Outreach, God. Lord, we ask tonight, as we get into your word, you will get into us. You know where each one of us are at here tonight, and your Holy Spirit is able to come and to penetrate and to point out things, Father God, that you want to work on, that you want to talk about, that you want to deal with, Lord. So this tonight, we just ask that you would use this night, this pulpit, just for that, to minister to our hearts and to get us to where you want us to be. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. So tonight's message, I've entitled it, Ready or Not, Here I Come. Ready or Not, Here I come. The word of God reads once again, therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day the Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Ready or not, here I come. The definition of ready is is this, it's it's to be fully prepared, available for immediate use. Fully prepared, available for immediate use. You know, the word ready is action. The word ready is now. You know, action is movement. It's something happening. You know, action is exertion. There's energy behind it. You know, action is working. There's effort moving, and action is is to move, it's to do, it's to act, it's to go. Action is, is action. Come on, somebody. Ready is action. But before you can be ready, how many know you got to get ready? There used to be a saying in a, in, a, in, a, in a former life of mine, we used to always tell each other, if I, if I stay ready, I don't got to get ready. Come on now. Stay ready, don't have to get ready. But before we can be ready, we must get ready. Here in verse uh, uh, 43, I'm going to read it again. It says, but understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would have not let his house be broken into. 
Now, I want you to imagine here tonight, if you had been tipped off that someone was planning on breaking into your house. Imagine here tonight, if you were to get a tip off that someone was going to break into your house. You get an anonymous phone call. Maybe somebody tells you, hey, I heard somebody talking about your house last night. So imagine for, for a moment if you got a tip that somebody was going to come at a certain time and break into your house. But not only that, imagine, if you will, that there was, you're out in the woods and there's no phone and there's no police you could call and there's no, nobody going to come help you. So you got the tip, somebody's going to come break into your house, you're in the middle of the woods, there's no phone and nobody's coming to help you. Can't call the police. Can't do nothing about it except protect yourself and prepare yourself. You know, I would have liked that. If I would have had some kind of warning, I would appreciate it. If somebody knew that my house was about to get broken into, I would like somebody to tip me off, to tell me about it, so that I could prepare myself and be, be ready. Protect myself and prepare myself. If I knew somebody was going to break into my house tonight, how many know I would check the windows? I would check the doors. And I wouldn't sleep at all. <laughs> I'll get a two for, two for five banger shot. I don't know, something. I ain't sleeping tonight. Because if I knew the hour when the thief was coming, how many know you stay up all night long? Number one, you stay up to be alert, to make sure, you know, what's taking place around your house, who's coming, where's he going to come from. But not only that, there'd be a nervousness. There'd be an anxiousness. There, you wouldn't be able to sleep. Maybe after you locked the doors and you shut the windows and you made everything sh- sure everything was secure, Maybe you go try to lay down, but how many know you wouldn't get much sleep? You wouldn't get much sleep because you know that at any moment, the thief's going to come. So you would stay awake, stay awake, you would stay alert, and you would probably think to yourself, ain't nobody going to catch me off guard. Ain't nobody coming up in this house. Come on, somebody. Especially considering that, that you have been privy to the information that said that the thief was on his way. And yet the Bible says that the coming of the Lord will be like a thief in the night. Now, unless they're a bumbling burglar, thieves are pretty smooth. They come and they creep in the dark. They don't don't make a lot of uh, uh, headway. They don't make a lot of commotion. They sneak. They slide. And ta-da. You know, I've even heard of people waking up in the morning in their very own home. And then when they wake up in the morning to find that somebody had burglarized their house during the night. You know that? So thieves come very sneaky, very smooth, very slick. Uh, in, a, in a moment when you would at least expect it. And the Bible says that the coming of the Lord will be just like a thief in the night. And what if? What if the Lord were to come to your house like a thief in the night tonight? What if the Lord were to come to your house like a thief in the night and peek through your window? What if the Lord were to come to our house tonight and peek through your window and my window? What would they see? Would they see a house that's in order? Would they see a house that's in disarray? Would they see a house that is uh, disorderly conduct? What would he see behind the veil? I know our lives are not perfect. But what would he find if he were creeping and looking through your window? I feel tonight if the Lord were to come like a thief in the night and look into many of our windows and many of our houses here tonight, I think you'll find some stuff that if you were to think about it, you probably want to clean up before he comes. You know, we don't really like too much when people just come unannounced to the house. Because you want to get things ready for when they come. Nobody likes people just to show up because you didn't have time to clean up. Nobody likes that. Don't just come, oh, look who's here. Yeah, but I say, you're like, go clean the restroom. Go clean the restroom. Give me just a second, just one second. Lock the door. And get to cleaning real quick. Nobody likes it when somebody surprises them with a visit because usually the house is in disarray or not in perfect order. 
How many know that's the truth? None of our houses right now are in perfect order. Nobody's. From the top to the bottom. If I come over and you know I'm going to come over in a week from now, a week from next Tuesday, I know a week from next Tuesday, that house is going to look pristine. Huh? Because I didn't come like a thief in the night. I came and I made an announcement, a, a schedule, a plan. And when there's a schedule and there's a plan and there's a, a time, how many of you got plenty of time to clean up your act? There's plenty of time to get things in order. There's plenty of time to get things in, 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 that are in disarray back in order. That's what this, this parable that the Lord is talking about is that if, the, if, the, if you knew the hour in which the thief was coming, you would have everything prepared. If you knew the exact hour, if you knew the exact moment that the thief was coming, you would be well prepared for his visit. Nothing would be in disarray. Everything would be secure. But how many know the Bible says that the Lord comes like a thief in the night? You don't know when he's going to show up. You don't know when he's going to come. And so the thing is, is like, how, are you going to be ready when he comes? I think, I feel that many of us here tonight, if the Lord were to come and take a peek, just a quick glimpse into our windows, there would be many things that he sees. He might see resentment. He might see trash from the past. He might see bitterness lurking behind closed doors. There's a lot of many, there's many things that I, I feel that the Lord will find in all of our houses if he were to show up here tonight. If we did not have ample warning of his return, who knows what the Lord might find? In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily ensnares us. You know, our house is a, here in this portion of Scripture, the parable is talking about the person and his house. And the house is our life. And having our, our lives in order, not knowing when he's going to return, but living as if he can return at any moment. The truth of the matter is that, that the Lord can return at any moment. You know, one of the classic themes of the first century church was this, uh, it was this constant, constant uh, theme of talking about that the return of the Lord could happen at any time. Apostle Paul talked as if God was coming back the next day. Peter, the apostles, when they would talk, they would speak as if the Lord was coming back at any time. And how many know that's the truth? That the Lord can come at any time. The Lord can come at any time. But how is our house and is it in disarray? There's so many things that can get us caught up and get entangled. We might not be ready, but we must get ready. Can somebody say amen? Maybe tonight if the Lord were to take a peek. We might be embarrassed. We, not, we might not be ready. But how many know we need to get ready? Because he just might show up. Just like if you knew your aunt might come. Or your mom might come. Or your dad might show up. How many know might's enough? How many know might's enough? And so we might not be ready here tonight, but how many know it's time to get ready? We got to get ready because the, the, the Bible says that he'll come like a thief in the night. So to get ready, it requires action. Everybody say action. Action. Everybody said action is movement. Action is movement. It's something happening. Action is exertion. There's energy behind it. Action is working. There's effort moving. Action is move, do, act, and go. So if we're going to get ready, there, there's some action that is required. And here's three ways we can get ready. Number one, fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12. It said, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. It so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. 
For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider who, him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You know, one of the ways that we can get ready is to fix our eyes on Jesus. Because so often we fix our gaze on others. So often we fix our gaze on things that have nothing to do with the second coming of Christ. We're fixing our gaze on, on, the, on, on, the, on the lateral instead of the eternal. One of the things that we fix our eyes on is uh, the walk of others. We look at others. We look at their, their faults. We look at their shortcomings. We look at them and, uh, and, we, and we point and we look and we judge, especially, everybody say especially, if they dare try to tell you anything. Don't you dare try to tell me nothing. Because I seen you last Tuesday. Huh? He's going to tell me when he does X, Y, and Z? Uh-huh. Instead of fixing our eyes on Jesus, we fix our eyes on the walk of others. And we become like Cisco and Ebert. How many of you remember Cisco and Ebert? The movie critics. Sideline. Criticizing. We become, we focus our gaze on the walk of others. We become uh, critical and judgmental. And this produces a bitter fruit of resentment and hatred. I was even thinking I was putting this together, man. If we were to drink water from your well, it'd be like, you know, if we were to drink water from your well, it's like, mm, mm, bitter. Sour. He. Three of the, one of the ways to get ready is to fix our eyes on Jesus, not to fix our eyes on everybody else. There's plenty to critique. There's plenty to look at. But how many know we're to fix our eyes on Jesus? He's the one that came. He's the one that suffered. He's the one that made a way where there seemed to be no way. If it wasn't for what Jesus did on the cross, man, I would not be here. I thank God for what the Lord did. Number two, as it pertains to getting ready for the second coming, is to make things right with others. Make things right with others. I'm talking to the Christian here tonight. You know, another word for sin is offense. Another word for sin is offense. In a lot of different translations, sin is interchangeable with offense. And you know what, I thought about it because now, man, nowadays, man, if you look in the world, especially America, right, everything is offensive. Everything is offensive. You can't say that. I'm offended. You do that, that's offensive. You need to put on your mask. That's offensive. That's offensive. That's offensive. I'm offended. And you know what I mean? It made me think, man, the enemy is good. He's crafty. If he can get everyone to be offended, if he can offend everyone. You know, offense is interchangeable with sin. It's like we're sinning against each other. It's like we're, we're, we're offending each other. We're hurting each other. We're marking each other. And, then, and suddenly we have a list of a thousand things that can offend me. That's offensive. I'm offended. Huh? Collar shirt on a Wednesday? I'm offended. Huh? Haircut to the side? I'm offended. And isn't that a great trick that the enemy has done to get everyone offended? Everyone offended with each other. Because what the Bible declares is that we need to make things right with each other. We need to be at peace with each other. But here we are offended with each other. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 19 says, An offended brother is harder to win than a fortified city. And once we're offended, the Bible says it's hard to win that brother back. And if I got a list of a thousand things that can offend me, man, I don't even know what I could say or what I could do. I'm a walking offense. I'm a walking offense. And you are offended about everything. It says it's easier to win a city, a fortified city, than to those, somebody that's been offended. So we need to make things right with others. Make things right with others. Not let the enemy get a foothold in our lives. Don't let the enemy uh, offend us. The enemy's trying to get us all offended. Third, 
getting our spiritual house in order. The, Lord's, the, the Bible says that the Lord's going to come like a thief in the night. He's going to come when you're not expecting him. And so it's important that we get our spiritual house in order. Sometimes we forget the basics. We forget the basics. And in, in, in so doing, it's like we're beating the air. We forget the basics, and in doing so, it's like we're beating the air. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9, 26, it says, Therefore I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight like I'm beating the air. No, I discipline my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself not, may not be disqualified. Apostle Paul said, I do not run aimlessly, and I do not fight like I'm beating the air. And sometimes when we, we forget the basics, basics of, of getting our spiritual house in order, we're fighting, but it's like we're fighting the air. We're fighting the air, and we're wearing ourselves out, but there's nobody there. There's nobody even there. I'm offended, and, uh, and I'm fighting, and, uh, and I don't like it, and, and all this stuff, and you're just beating at the air, and at the end of the day, you're burned out. All burned out. All burned out because I forgot the basics. I forgot the basics, and so I'm just swinging, and I'm, I'm swinging, and I'm tired, and I'm weary, and I'm leery, and I'm swinging at the air. And how many know the air's winning? Air's winning. You ain't, you ain't hit it once. And at the end of the day, you wore out, and because you forgot the basics, you say in the morning, you know what I mean? Well, that was just Monday, but I'll get you air Tuesday. Watch. <laughs> Wait till the morning, Tuesday. I'm going to get Tuesday in the morning. Uh-huh. You wake up swinging, swinging at the air, swinging at a fence, swinging, swinging, and you're tired, burned out again. And the enemy's like that, like right there, boom, just holding the head. You ever see that, in the, you see that in the movies before? When the older guy holds the head, they're just swinging like that. Nothing happening, getting tired. You done yet? You done yet? You done yet? Getting our spiritual house in order, we got to get back to the basics. The basics of prayer. Getting alone with God. You know, sometimes so many things can be avoided if we would just get back to the basics. I mean, we say it a lot because we know it's a missing element. How can we tell? Because you've been beating the air for the last five months, man. You've been swinging. You're sweating, and there's nobody there. There's nobody there. It says the, the wicked run, and no one pursues them. You know, beating the air. Are you done yet? Why don't we get back to the basics? Get it alone with God. God, help my bitter heart. God, help me in my, help me in my heart. Help me in my heart. I, I've been offended. I, I, I feel like I've been sinned against. I, I feel offended, and I, I don't know what to do about it, but beating the air ain't going to help nothing. But if we get back to the basics, back to the basics. You know, sometimes we feel like screaming, and we're yelling, and we're screaming at our kids, and we're yelling and screaming at our husbands, we're yelling and screaming at our wives. Turn that scream into a tongue. Come on, somebody. And instead of yelling and screaming, rabasando como chie. Come on. Start praying. Cry out to God and get back to the basics, amen, of prayer. Getting our spiritual house in order also means getting back to the basics of discipleship, of discipleship. You know, we've been apart for some months now, and we, we've, we've missed that, that good old-fashioned discipleship where you would come and, and Abraham would, after service, would get a hold of you and he would ask you, you know, how's your day going and how's, how you been and what's really going on and get into your life. Come on, somebody. Sister Danielle would come alongside of you and begin to minister to you. Sister Judy, discipleship. Not only that, when you begin to minister to people as well in the fellowship. And so sometimes we're forgetting the basics of discipleship, of being discipled. Has it been months since you've let somebody speak into your life? How long has it been since you got a word of correction, a word of admonishment? Huh? A word of encouragement. How long has it been since you told somebody about the Lord, how you encourage your daughter or your son in the things of God? How long has it been? we got to get back to the basics of discipleship. Not only that, but in this, in this strange time that we live in, we got to get our spiritual house in order and get back to the, to the, the, the basics of church activity. You know, we're there in, in Vision 2020, 2020 Vision there with Pastor Al. And he said, you know, we're, we're not, there's nothing to go back to. This is the new norm. 
There is no telling what's up ahead. But we need to prepare for what's taking place now. And we got to, one of the areas that we're missing in the basics is church activity. What does that mean? Okay. If you want to come, you can register. Come to the service. If, you're, if you're not, you don't feel well enough or you don't, you're not comfortable yet, that's fine too. Check in online. You know, I, I seen a meme recently. Somebody sent me a meme recently that said, it had, two, it had two sides, right? The top said, how your pastor imagine, how your pastor imagines everyone watching online services and had a family of like 10, they had a, a bowl of popcorn, they're like, ah. you know, like, ah. I was like, yeah. And then on the bottom it said, how they really watch online services. And it was a dark room, a lady lying on her side on her bed with a, with a screen in her face. Funny. Reality. Amen. But we need to get back to church activity. What does that mean? Being active as the church. That means, okay, if we're in online services, then, then get excited. Get up. Be counted. Let's do it. Come on now. You, when we came to the church service, you know, when we still had open service, you didn't, get, you didn't find a pew, get your blanket and lay on your side. Come on now. I ain't capping on nobody. I'm just saying, maybe we need to get up. Get back to our, our spiritual disciplines and get our spiritual house in order. Church activity, getting involved in life groups. Is it like it was before? I like going to places. I like going to other people's houses and fellowshipping. So do I. But right now it's Zoom. Getting involved in church activities, being a part of what God's doing and being called, getting called upon and doing your part. Amen. Now, in Matthew chapter 24, so we're talking about getting our house in order. We're talking about being well prepared when the return of the Lord comes. And that if any of us really knew the date and the time, we would do something about it. We would do something about it. In Matthew chapter 24 and 45, it says this. Who then is faithful and wise servant? Whom the master has put in charge of the servants of his household, and they will give him food at the proper time. It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. This portion of scripture, 42 through 51, it talks about that not only that we must be awake, not only must we be vigilant, that the coming of the Lord shall be like a thief in the night. Not only must we be well prepared, have our house in order, but that the Lord is also looking for those who would remain active in taking care of the people. Not only having our act together, but also taking part in helping others. He said, who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants of his household to give them food in their proper time. You know, I love these portions of scripture. I like reading them over and over. There's a, many different ones about, you know, what it means to be a disciple, what God is expecting from us as disciples. And all these things, man, like it says in John chapter 6, these are hard sayings for a lot of people. Hard sayings. You know, especially because in this 21st century, you know, the, the church is like a, a, a thing you do. It's a place you go. It's not a lifestyle you live. Many people believe that. It's a big church experience, giant churches, you know, giant mega churches, great worship experience. Don't get involved in my business, and I'll see you next Sunday. I mean, I look, and I look, and I look. Believe me, I'm, I preach, so I'm always in the Word looking for scriptures, and I, don't, I can't find that one yet. The feel good, come as you are, stay as you are, scripture. Haven't found it. I don't know if it's in Ezekiel or maybe, maybe Lamentations. I don't know. One of those ones that have uh, got around me, but I haven't found it. He said, if you want to be faithful and wise, I want to be faithful and wise. I want to be faithful to the Lord. He's saying, look, then I'm going to put you in charge of some things, and when I come back, you better be doing it. I'm going to leave for a while, but I'm going to come back. And when I come back, not only better, that house better be in order, but also you better be active and busy doing my work. That sounds like action to me. That sounds active to me. 
That's like that. That sounds like it's not my uh, prerogative. It doesn't sound like it's not my, my plan, but it's what does he want me to do? You know, we won't have the desire or the compassion to care for God's people if our house is not in order. If our house is not in order, we won't even have the desire, the will to do anything for the Lord. You know, when your house is out in disarray and out of order, out of service, how many know it's hard to even look even further than your own nose? That's why it's so important that we get our own house in order. Can somebody say amen? You know, we got to know our DNA as Victory Outreach. We have a unique DNA as Victory Outreach. And we're not in, in, involved in some blasé, blasé ministry. You know, the best way I could put it is, is this. is You hear vision. In Victory Outreach, you hear vision. 2020 vision, the vision. What's the vision? They're always talking about the vision. The vision is the Great Commission. The vision is the great commission. And in the sovereignty of God, God has used our founding pastor and the leadership of Victory Outreach to put the commission in the front part of our face that we would understand that we are a vision-driven ministry. What does that mean? A commission-driven ministry. The great commission-driven ministry. I thank God for that. But you either have to understand our DNA and why it's so important to get our house in order. It's not just a, oh, you should just get your house in order. Hey, you need to really clean up a few things. And eh, let's see what happens. It's so important, so vital that you get your house in order and you take these things serious and you prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord because we have much work to do. We have much work to do. We must get ready. We must get ready. For this great, terrible, and glorious day. We must get ready for this great and terrible and glorious day that's on its way like a thief in the night. We got to say, change me, Lord. Deal with my heart that I can help change the world because if I don't allow God to come and change my heart, I ain't going to change nothing. I'm not going to change the world. I'm not going to make an impact. If I want to hold on to my ways, and I want to just blase, if I don't want to get ready for the coming of the Lord, I want to act like nothing's happening. But suppose that servant, verse 48, is wicked, and he says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day that he does not expect him and in an hour he is not aware of. And the Bible says in 51, he will cut him into pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, many are going to fall into this condition. They're going to say, you know what, they've been saying for 2,000 years he's coming back. They've been saying that for 2,000 years, man. He's probably not coming back for another 2,000 years. That's what happened in this parable. He said, my master is staying away a long time. And he begins, and because he doesn't have an anticipation or the expectation that at any moment the return of the Lord could come, there's no motivation, there's no action, there's no doing. And a matter of fact, he loses focus. He begins to eat and beat. He begins to beat on his brothers and eat and drink with the drunkards. Uh-uh-uh. Remember, these are people that this, that, the, that this Lord has set up to do a work for him. These are not sinners. These are not, you know, these are not initially people that are just in the world. These are people that, that the master had set up to do a work for him. These are people that he had set up and he anticipated that they were going to bring a profit, that they were going to take care of business, they were going to feed the hurting, that they were going to touch the lost. Uh, he pulled them in, gave them wages, took care of them, thinking that they were going to take care of business. But because the Lord tarried, because he didn't come quickly, they began to do whatever they wanted. They began to get lazy. They began to get slack. They began to beat on each other, and they began to get drunk with the drunkards. Far be it from us that we would take it lightly as if the return of the Lord is some false thing. If there was ever a time that God's mercy and grace is trying to wake up the church, it's now. 
We heard this weekend that a great revival comes to wake up a sleeping church. That is the purpose of revival, to wake up a sleeping church. If you knew that a thief was on his way to hit your house, would you get prepared? Would you get ready? If you had foreknowledge, what would you do? Would you get your house in order? Would you secure your windows? Would you lock your doors? Would you get your house in order? Your spiritual house in order? Would you begin to prepare the way, knowing that at any time, things could happen? It's not enough for us to remain the same or be blasé, blasé. The Word of God does not allow for it. The Word of God does not condone it. But sometimes we don't know the Word of God. We tune our ears out to the Word of God. But the Word of God plainly says that we cannot stay the same or be blasé, blasé. Or, or just go on as if he's never coming back. Or just go lax up and get drunk with the drunkards. Beat on one another. We need Jesus to break us down and rebuild this house. Otherwise, we will not be effective. Lastly, three things we should be caught doing when the Lord comes back and he returns like a thief in the night. Three things that we should be caught doing. Of all the things you can get caught doing, these are the three things you should be get caught doing. Amen? Number one, you should get, be caught doing. All of us should get caught, be caught doing when the Lord returns, evangelizing and discipling the hurting people of the world with the message of hope and the plan of Jesus Christ. Number one, know your DNA. When the Lord returns, man, I hope I'm in the middle of a Bible study. Come on, somebody. I think I get extra points for that. I might just get extra points for that. Come on. I pray that I'm at the altar call at the men's home and I'm laying hands. I don't always lay hands and prophesy. Come on. But sometimes I do. But I feel, you know, fired up. Especially with Andy back, man. We'll side by side. It's not, give him a word, Andy. Come on. We'll get fired up over there. I pray that I'm going to. It's one of those fired up mornings, man. One of those fired up mornings where I want to give a word to one of the brothers. And I lay hands and I pray he returns. And I'm evangelizing and discipling the hurting people of the world with the message of hope and the plan of Jesus Christ when he returns. Because I get a bonus for that. That's what we're called to do as Victory Outreach. The vision is the Great Commission. Letting people know. Not only going out to the streets and evangelizing, which is part of our name, Victory Outreach, but discipleship is so important. The little that I know, letting someone else know. The little that I've learned, help someone else to learn. Discipling people. That is part of the Great Commission. That I must take people along for the ride. Maxwell said that a leader by himself, a leader alone, is not a leader at all. He's just taking a walk. Three things we should be caught doing when the Lord comes back. Number two, we should be being caught, committed to plant and develop churches, rehabilitation homes, and training centers in strategic cities of the world. Wouldn't it be nice that when the Lord returns... We're in the middle of starting a victory center, a grand opening. We're right there with the big scissors with a grand opening, a victory center, and whoo, he comes back. How many know we get a bonus for that too? You get caught in the act. They said, get over here, good and faithful servant. Balloons, confetti, come on now. This one right here, Douglas, got caught in the act. Come on. He was planning and developing a church. A rehabilitation home, a training center in a strategic city when God returns. And if you're not planning it at that very moment when he returns, hopefully you're on the phone call making some kind of moves for that thing when he returns. Or hopefully you're on your knees and you're in, the, in deep prayer praying for that plant, that church to be planted when he returns. Or you're strategizing it for when he returns. That you're busy doing his work when he returns. Can somebody say Amen. The DNA of Victory Outreach, what we should be doing, the vision is the Great Commission. And lastly, the third thing we should be caught doing when the Lord comes back like a thief in the night 
is inspiring and instilling within people the desire to fulfill the potential in life with a sense of dignity, belonging, and destiny. I pray that each of us, when the Lord returns and he's going to come in a, in, a, in a slick fashion, in a, in a last minute, when you're not expecting it, I pray at that moment you're encouraging somebody, you're lifting them up, you say God's going to use you, God's going to, and you go, hallelujah, in, the, in mid-inspiration, in mid-encouragement. We're to be in, inspiring and instilling within people the desire to fulfill the potential. Letting people know that, man, God wants to use you. God has a plan for you. But if we don't take care of our own house, we're never going to have the desire to want to take care of the people of the Lord. The Bible declares that Jesus will come like a thief in the night. He's going to come when we least expect it. He's going to come like a thief in the night. I'm going to know usually that's how it happens. Here today, gone tomorrow. Here today, gone tomorrow. But one day, Jesus is going to come. He's going to come, and he's going to want to know what you did. It's not a far-fetched thing. It, it's, it's headed our way, and it's coming here soon. Will you let the Lord minister to your heart? Will you put all those things aside? If you got bitterness, if you got resentment, if you got, you know, you're all these, these ills that have maybe happened to you, took place in your life, and it's hindering you from being able to fulfill the Great Commission, would you let Jesus come in and do what he wants to do within your life so that you could do your part in the Great Commission and in the vision of Victory Outreach? We are living in some powerful times. We're living in some terrible times. And we're living in some powerful times. If there was ever a time to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to minister to our hearts, to begin to break us down, to begin to take full control, to say, you know what, God, I don't know if I'm ready. If there was ever a time to say, you know what, I don't know if I'm ready. If the Lord came right now, I don't know what he would see if he looked through my window. If God looked through the window of your soul right now, would there be bitterness, resentment, madness, sinfulness? God can't use us like that. He's not going to be able to use us like that. Then every day that could have been used in the Great Commission, the fulfillment of the Great Commission, every day that could have been used in fulfillment of the Great Commission is a day that the Lord will have to use to try to break you, to try to humble you. That's a day lost. That could have been a day that you were moving in the gifts. That could have been a day you were moving in the spirit. That could have been a day you were helping to plan and develop training centers and churches and rehabilitation homes. That could have been a day you were inspiring and instilling within somebody the, the desire to fulfill the potential in life. But no, it's a day that had to be spent trying to bring you to a place of recognizing and realizing that you're not who you think you are and you're not where you need to be. The Lord is merciful. He's gracious. But he called us for such a time as this and we don't got 100 years, 50 years. The time is now. The time is now for men and women to rise up, to make a difference. To put themselves aside. Jesus put himself aside. They said, are, are you the one they say that you are? He zipped his lip. He didn't say a thing. He let them do what he had to do because that was his father's will. He just did what he had to do. He put himself aside. Made himself of no reputation. He who was equal with God made himself of no reputation. So that he could do and fulfill the great mission that his father had set him out to do. What about us here tonight? Are we ready to set ourselves aside? To get back to the basics so that God could use our life in this great vision which is the great commission in these last days? I don't know about you but I wasted enough time 
I'm in my 40s now and I'm ready to make an impact. I'm, I'm tired of fussing and fighting with the air. Just swinging at the air. Burning myself out. Getting tired and tired for what? Just tired of fighting the air. It's time for me to fight. It's time for me to fight. Hallelujah. What about you here tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, right there where you're at. Right there where you're at. Take a moment right now, a reflective moment. If the Lord were to come back tonight, if the Lord were to come back tonight, come on, let the Holy Spirit minister to you and how and what you need to do to take care of your spiritual house. Come on, he's, he's ministering to you tonight somehow. You got to take care of this area of your life. It's allowing for things to come in, bitterness, resentments, and all oh, the enemy loves that kind of stuff. That's what he thrives off of. Because if he can get you bitter and resentment, fighting with one another, fighting even with your spouse, fighting with your children, upset, looking around, then he knows that you'll never be able to fulfill your part in the Great Commission. Too busy beating the air. Too busy just beating the air. And now we know if, he, if we're just busy beating the air, we're, we're, we're burned out. We're too tired to fight the devil. We're too tired to make an impact. But no longer. Come on, say it right now. No longer. No longer. I'm going to let the Lord come in. I'm going to begin to clean up my act. I'm going to begin to clean up my house. I know, I know it's hard. I know it's work. I know it's going to exhort energy. I know you're going to have to start moving. But one, little by little, I'm not, we're, we're trying to get ready. We're trying to be ready, but first we've got to get ready. So the Lord has ministered to you right now. There's something you got to take care of. Some issue you got to let go. Somebody you got to go to and forgive. That, 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 there's something there, that, that, that resentment, that bitterness, that's keeping you from moving forward. I don't know what it is. Only you know what it is. But let the Lord minister to you today. So you could do your part. Let me tell you something. You know how good it feels to be in the will of God, to be able to inspire and instill within individuals, to fulfill their potential in life. It's like Pastor Bobby used to say, it's like a shot in the arm. It's like if, if, when you do what you're supposed to do for the Lord, he gives you a little something. He gives you a little, a little it like eggs you on. He gives you a little something, a, a little something. And I mean, no people like us, we need that little something. And he gives you that little something. And it's his way of saying, that's right. Yes, just like that. Inspire, instill, encourage. It feels so good to be able to inspire and instill within others to fulfill the potential in life. But you got to put yourself aside. You got to put yourself aside. Put yourself aside. Get your house in order. Let the Holy Spirit come so you can be effective. It's not just for the magnificent seven, it's not just for the front row, it's not just for the pastor. But that's the call to each of us as disciples to inspire and instill within others to fulfill the potential in life through the power of the Holy Spirit to help our pastor and to help our Lord Jesus Christ plant and develop churches all over the world to go into every inner city preaching this gospel to every creature so they know that they don't have to live like that they don't have to be like that they don't have to be lied to any longer that there is hope in Jesus Christ. That's what this thing is all about. But would you get out of the way? Let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do. He wants to use your life. He wants to use you as a powerful instrument. In Jesus' name. It's no age thing. It's no race thing. It's a Jesus thing. And he wants to use your life. That's why he saved you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord Jesus, we come before your presence here tonight, God. And we believe, we believe, we believe at any moment you could return. You could return in the twinkling of an eye. And Father God, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, anoint your word here tonight that was spoken. Minister to the hearts of people and do a radical transformation somehow by the power of your word. By the power of your word, I pray. That you would loosen, Father God, and deliver us, Father God, and help us to become 
something useful for your honor and your glory. God, we are tired of being ineffective in the kingdom of God. God, let not the enemy, Father God, any longer lie to, misdirect, or get us to beat the air to no avail. But God, I pray from this moment forward, God, you would loosen, loosen men and women to be able to do a work for you, to do your great commission, the vision that you've given to us to do. God, from this moment forward, Father God, we're just so grateful that we're going to see a newness, a freshness of mind, of spirit, of heart. And you're going to use us for your honor and your glory. Like never before. An outpouring of your anointing. And an, an, an inspiring, an empowering of your Holy Spirit. So that we might be able to do all that you've called us to do. So when that moment comes, we'll be caught in the act. Caught in the act of doing your will. God, let us be busy doing your will when you return. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a good, good hand of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord one more hand of praise tonight. Come on, if you receive that word, someone say, Lord, beautify my house. Amen. How many know we need to we need to beautify our houses? Amen. That was a powerful word from Brother Darius. Amen. That was a powerful, powerful word. Amen. I believe that God wants us to beautify our house. So when we when we beautify, when we allow the Lord to beautify our house, then we can go and help somebody beautify their house. Come on, somebody. See, we can't go and beautify somebody else's house if our house is out of order. Come on, somebody. We can't go and beautify someone else's house if our house is on fire. Well, come on, somebody. And I believe like never before, God is, is challenging us. It's challenging us, even in quarantine, amen, even where nobody could see. See, your leader might not be able to see what's going on in your house. Come on, somebody. Your good friend, right? Right? They may not be able to see what's going on behind closed doors. But how many know that the Lord sees? The Lord sees. And because he sees, how many know that we have to we have to believe and act like he sees that our house, if it's not in order, that, that it's out of order. And we begin to act, like Brother Darius said, have action and begin to get our houses beautified and in order. And in return, God will be able to use us. Come on, somebody, to help beautify others houses others lives amen i want to be effective i don't know about you if you want to be effective if you want to be caught come on somebody like like a like a spiritual spiritual maid come on somebody that goes and cleans uh helps people get their lives l allowing the lord to use you amen to go out and, and and just help people get their lives and and beautify the house come on somebody if you if that's you and you say i want that amen i want to close in a word of prayer also want to remind us uh, that registration for our Sunday service is going to be uh, this fr this Friday. Amen. Registration will open back up. Come. Encourage you if, you if you if you feel well. If you say, you know what, I really need to get to service. God's been tugging on your heart already. And you say, I need to get there. Register on Friday. Amen. Because it fills up fast. Amen. And so tonight we're going to ask that the Lord seals this message in our hearts. And, and we thank you once again on behalf of Pastor Lisa and Sister Judy for tuning in. Uh, but let's close in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you, God. God, we know, God, that you are coming back, God. God, we don't know when, but it's soon, God. And, Lord, we pray, God, like Brother Darius said, like your word was saying, God, Lord, that we're caught in the act, God, doing your will, God, that we're caught, God, oh, God, with our houses in order, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, my God, Lord, that you would begin, God, oh, God, to help us, God, oh, to to to. God, to get ready, God, to prepare ourselves. God, not to take it lightly, my God. We pray in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we pray that you would seal this message in our hearts, Lord. We love you. We thank you. And in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you on Sunday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs>